These are the notes for LT4 in the electromagnetism unit. And the purpose of this target is to compare and contrast series and parallel circuits. Uh, remember LT3 was Ohm's law, the VIR triangle. And so the way we use that VIR triangle now will differ a little bit for these series and parallel circuits. So we need to obviously know the difference between the two and then how we would calculate current based on what type of circuit it is. All right. So um, back in LT3, we did a quick talk about the components, the essential parts of a circuit. Notes are a little different for this target. We're going to write just a few things here. And then on your next sheet of paper, we're going to have a couple circuits drawn and then so a bunch of numbers under here. All right. So um, we'll do the concept on one page, and then we'll put some of the numbers for the two types of circuits on the next one. So just to recap, and we'll keep this pretty short, remember, in any circuit, we need a voltage source. Okay, so this was something that was going to push the electrons around the circuit. Okay, it pushes the electrons, it was the pressure. And it could be a battery, it could be a generator, Remember, a AA battery is like one and a half volts. The little square guys are nine volts. Your electrical outlets in your house are 120 volts. Okay, so obviously a lot more push, let's say, than a little nine volt battery. But um, any type of circuit has to have some sort of voltage source to move the electrons. Now, the electrons, those are not in the voltage source. You don't go to Walmart and buy some energizers and say that you're buying electrons. Okay, you are just you are buying the pressure. All right? The electrons are in the connectors. And 99 times out of the 100, out of 100, we're talking about wires. Okay, so the whole purpose of the wires is to supply the electrons because we know that the electrons are outside of a nucleus and so they can move freely throughout the wire. So that's the second essential part. We're going to talk about resistors a lot. Resistors are really anything that's wired into the circuit, maybe other than the switch. The switch really isn't a resistor, but the, the purpose of a resistor is to convert electrical potential energy into some desired form. It, it, think of a resistor as the reason for the circuit. So a reason for the circuits or the classroom ceiling is so that we can turn the lights on and off. So light bulbs could be a resistor. Okay. There's, there's a really simple one. It could be you have a toaster plugged into an outlet. Well, the resistor then is the toaster because that's what you want to work. All right, it's taking electricity, electrical potential energy, turning it into something else. It's using that push of electrons to do something. And you'll see it kind of within, it's called a schematic circuit diagram. It'll be a little squiggly line like that. All right. Sometimes for voltage source, it's going to be like there'll be a wire. And this is supposed to show like two terminals, but that's, that's what the picture will look like for, for a voltage source. Connectors are just going to be lines. And the resistors, they just get these little zigzags. All right. And the last thing, just to recap, not essential but practical. All right, we're, you're going to want to switch within circuits. And obviously it's to turn them on and off. Right? You want to turn things on and off. But the way that electricians talk about this is that the switch opens and closes circuits. All right, it opens and closes circuits. So if you think back, we've looked at a FET simulation before. Uh, if a circuit is closed, that means that the pieces of metal are all connected into a loop, so the electrons are traveling. So if a circuit is closed, that means the device, the light bulb, whatever, are actually turned on because there's a complete path. If the switch is in the open position, that means that your lights, for example, would be off because the electrons are going to get to a spot and there will be a space where it's not connected anymore therefore they will stop flowing. Okay, So closed means on, open means off. 
Now we'll do a, a lot with this target. Okay, there'll be lots of simulations. We'll look at lots of examples. But one of the things we have to start to get used to in this target is using Ohm's law. Remember, Ohm's law is this VIR triangle. Using Ohm's law, let's divide, which you know from your formula sheet. Using Ohm's law to calculate the current in these circuits. Now, series circuits are the easiest, most basic, but probably also the least useful of all circuits. To find the total resistance, so here's our squigglies. We've got three resistors on this circuit. Could be three light bulbs, could be a TV, could be a clock, could be you charging a cell phone here. I don't know. All right, you've got three resistors, and here's an outlet. All right, that's going to be our push. And if you want to figure out the total resistance in this circuit, total always infers that you add. So all you do is add resistor 1 to resistor 2, could be to resistor 30. All right, Who knows how many resistors are on this circuit, but you just add them up to get the total resistance. We're going to calculate the current so that you can see why this isn't a, is not a good type of wiring solution for a large space, like a house. All right, So we know that in this one, if we wanted to figure out the total resistance in this one, it's going to be 2 ohms plus 4 ohms plus 6 ohms. Remember, omega is the unit. So 6 plus 4 is 10, 10 plus 12 is 2. So our total resistance in this circuit is 12 ohms. It's, it's going to be pushed by 120 volts. So this is going to resist this push. If you want to think of it that way. So to figure out the current, it is just going to be voltage divided by resistance. Because remember, to find current, you cover up what you don't know, what you want to find. Voltage divided by resistance. So we're going to go 120 volts divided by 12 ohms. And 120 divided by 12 is 10. All right, so there's 10 amps of current flowing through that circuit. Think about this. If we were to wire in another resistor, so if you had a room that was wired in one big loop, okay, and there was only one path, every time you turn something else on in that room, maybe you turn on some speakers, and okay, maybe you plug in the Christmas tree. I don't know what you do, but every single time you add a resistor, think what that would do. If you add resistors, we're going to be dividing by a bigger number, which means the total current, total current we have to know is I, total current decreases. If you had too many things on or plugged in at once, they, they wouldn't receive enough of a current because they all have to share. Okay, this is the sharing circuit where I'm only going to push with 120 volts. This is like that idea of I've got a big bag of M&Ms and we're going to divide them up. If we've got a class of 30, you're not getting many M&Ms. If I've got a class of 10, so fewer resistors, you're going to get more M&Ms, right? More M&Ms per person. So that's a limitation of this type of circuit. If you've only got one or two things, you might be able to get away with it in terms of amp ampage. But if you've got a bunch, of, a bunch of devices, especially if they require a lot of current, this isn't going to work. Another fault of it is if one of these resistors fails, we can also call them a load. You remember from LT3. So if one load or resistor fails, every other device is going to stop. Nothing would work because it's, the electrons only have one path. Okay? And so if the electrons, let's just say they were traveling this way around the circuit, let's say the light bulb, let's say they're all light bulbs, keep this easy. This one's fine. This light bulb burns out all of a sudden you would open up the circuit. This would be broken. This one's not going to work. And then there's not, you're not going to get a complete loop through. So you break this anywhere and they all stop working. All right. In your house, if you had a light bulb burn out in the living room and all of a sudden the light bulb in you know, the, your bathroom doesn't work, well, how are you going to know which one burn out? The light bulb maybe on your front porch doesn't work. Like, 
it would it would be a nightmare if your house was on one big loop, all right? Because if one thing stops, everything else shuts down. So not a good plan. Which leads us to this parallel circuit. These circuits, all right, they're more realistic. Think circuit breakers in your house. This is more like what happens. And you see, this is supposed to be a one. I apologize. That's kind of smudged. But this is resistor one, resistor two, resistor three. I purposefully kept them with the same resistance, okay, the same resistance through here. Each of these loops in a parallel circuit is called a branch. So this could be branch one, this could be branch two, this could be branch three. So B means a branch. Think of a loop. Now check that out. Each of these has a complete path to the battery. I shouldn't say battery, it's 120 volts. So let's say to the outlet. Okay, so this light bulb has a complete path. This guy, you can ignore this one and this little line right here doesn't matter to him either. He has a complete path. And then light bulb three also has a complete path. So if light bulb two goes out, who cares? Three and one are still happy. One goes down, no worries. Two and three are still happy. All right, so that's obviously an advantage of parallel circuits is that you can run devices independently it's not an all-or-nothing type of scenario but in terms of paying your electric bill okay, at some point hopefully you're gonna be paying your own power bill and it's because of this same thing that it's important to turn lights off alright I'm I'm a guilty party I have a way of walking into a room flicking on a light walking upstairs flicking on another light leaving that one on coming back downstairs leaving a TV on what Okay, I'm, I'm guilty as charged. But to think about, like, why does that cause such an increase in power output? It's, it's a VIR triangle thing. Because here, if I just kept turning on lights and turning on TVs and whatever, who cares? The amount of current is just going to go down and down and down. It's not going to give a full push to everybody. Totally different here. So, to calculate... Okay, to calculate... The total current in this type of circuit, here's what you have to do. Calculate the current in each branch, in each branch separately, and then add them together. Okay, so for this one, your total current would be like I in branch one, current in branch one, whoops, there should be a plus, plus the current in branch two, plus the current in branch, th branch three, dot, dot, dot. All right, so we have to handle these independently. So here we go. Branch one, 120 volts, it's always VIR, divided by two ohms, because that's the resistance. 120 divided by two, means whatever device you have going in branch one is going to have 60 amps of current going to it. Branch two gets the full push, because remember it has its own path to the outlet. So 120 volts divided by four ohms. That's got 30 amps going to it. So there's 60 going to, let's say it's room one, 30 going to room two. Branch three, 120 volts and in this one, there's 6 ohms of resistance. 120 divided by 6 is 20. So check that out. Every time I leave a light on, turn a TV on somewhere, this keeps adding up to find the total current going through the house. So 60 plus 30 is 90. 90 plus 20. That means at that point, I've got 110 amps of current going through. All right, so you can quickly see there is an advantage to this because I can turn off branch two and these guys can still work. All right? I can have multiple branches going, they get the full push. But that's why if somebody in your house harps on you to you know, turn stuff off when you leave the room, this, this is the why. Because right? every time you leave it on, more and more current is being used, which we end up paying for, for in our consumer's energy bill or whoever your provider is. All right, so that's a good start for LT4. You do not want to take this target until you've worked through all the gizmos and simulations. All right, so make sure you're keeping up with that also before you take this one. Good luck.